This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. Hello, friends, and welcome back. Well, I wasn't actually planning to talk about this topic until I listened to a Christian podcast yesterday as I was driving through the countryside in Russia. And I once again heard a scripture that was misquoted and misapplied, and it really got under my skin. So I thought I would uh, put together a little talk about the topic of truth. But before I get into that topic, I'd like to remind you that if you have any questions or comments, anything you'd like to share with me or thoughts that you have about what I've said, feel free to drop me a line at the email address ancientpaths at cantrell.cc. Also, I'd appreciate it if you left comments on your podcast player or on the YouTube channel. It's good to get feedback in various ways. And if you like what you're hearing, uh, please share it with other people as well. I'd love to reach out and help more people, if at all possible. And I don't do any advertising or anything like that. It's all word of mouth, trusting that God's going to move in people's hearts. So anything you feel led to do in those directions, I'd be very thankful for. All righty, so... I was driving yesterday, like I said, and listening to a Christian podcast. I won't mention the name of it because some of you may be familiar with it, but also if someone is listening 10 years from now, this podcast that I was listening to will surely be forgotten and way back in the past. And there was a discussion in part on this podcast about counseling, Christian counseling. And the speaker, again, misquoted and misapplied something that Jesus taught. And the man who was speaking said that when he's in a counseling session, he wants to be sure that the truth is spoken. And once people know the truth, then they'll be set free from all of the grief and the pain and the anguish and the trauma that they've faced. So the idea really was when two people are talking, if someone speaks the truth, then that truth is going to bring freedom. And honestly, that is a misapplication. It's not what Jesus taught. And I'm going to talk about truth a little bit. What did Jesus actually say about truth? So let's go back and look at what Jesus actually said. Now, I know that I've spoken about this in previous podcast episodes. It'll be familiar to many of you. And as I was listening to these speakers yesterday, it just stood out to me again how often I hear this scripture misapplied and that there's a lack of understanding about what the Lord says about truth. What is truth? So I'll start with this scripture, John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. I'll do these two verses and then I'll come back to the context of it uh, in a little bit. So in verse 31, we read, To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you really are my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, that's what the Lord said. Often, those words of his, that quote of his, gets shortened to, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Or, in the terms of this podcast that I listened to yesterday, it just got trimmed down to, the truth will set you free. The idea that, if we know the truth, then we'll be set free, which is accurate. But how do you know the truth? That's the question. What are the claims that Jesus makes about what is truth? And the world's understanding of what is truth is very different from the way that Jesus talks about it, what truth is in the kingdom of God. So let's just very quickly look at this. Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you really are my disciples. There really is an if-then statement. If you hold to my teaching, then you truly are my disciples. So there's something to be said there. If we will hold to his teaching, and holding to his teaching means actually obeying it, doing it, holding it as a valuable thing, keeping it close and living in it. If we hold his teachings, then we are disciples. And I spoke about it earlier, uh, a few episodes ago, when I was talking about Abram and faith. 
Even demons believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They know that truth, but they don't hold to it. They don't submit to it, and they're not disciples of Jesus. So Jesus says, if you hold to my teaching, then you really are my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So knowing the truth, according to Jesus, is conditional to being a disciple. If we hold to his teachings... Then we're his disciples, and then we will know the truth. There's a condition to knowing the truth, and that is walking with Jesus. And once we hold to his teachings, put them into practice in our lives, and walk with him as his followers, then we're going to know the truth. And then there's going to be freedom that comes. The freedom that only comes from being a disciple of Jesus. It is not a freedom that is found in sitting and having a conversation over a cup of coffee, unless that conversation leads us to be followers of Jesus more deeply and more purely. There's a condition to knowing his truth. So the thing that I wanted to look at, there's a few places where Jesus speaks of truth. Here in John chapter 8, of course, what I just read and what follows, there's a lot of talk about truth. I'll come back to that. But I'd like to look at what Pilate said about truth. And if you remember, Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate. The Jews had brought him there to judge him and condemn him to death. And Pilate had the authority to do that. This is in John chapter 18. And we'll pick it up in verse 33. Pilate then went back inside the palace and summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Now let's take a second here to think about this. Pilate knows that Jesus has been doing miraculous things. He has heard the stories, and he knows that the presence of Jesus is very disruptive to the Jews. And he comes to Jesus, and he's heard the Jews saying that Jesus is claiming to be the king of the Jews. And he asks, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus asked him, is that your own idea, or did others talk to you about me? And Pilate replied, well, am I a Jew? It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it that you've done? And Jesus replies, not in the way that I would have thought he might reply when Pilate, who has the power of life and death over Jesus, says, what is it that you've done? And Jesus says in verse 36, my kingdom is not of this world. So he has said that, yes, I am a king but it's not a kingdom on this earth. Jesus says, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. And Pilate picks up on the one thing. You are a king then. And Jesus answers, Yep, you're right, in saying that I'm a king. In fact, for this reason, I was born. And for this, I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Now, there's quite a claim by Jesus. As I've often said, he's a carpenter from Nazareth. And he says, I'm a king, but I'm not a king from this earth. I'm a king from a different place. And I was born into this world to tell people about that truth, to testify to the truth. And this carpenter from Nazareth says, everyone on the side of truth, listens to me. That is an exclusive claim. Everyone throughout all history, throughout all time, on the face of the earth, that claims to be on the side of the truth but doesn't listen to Jesus is not actually on the side of truth. That's amazing. That's remarkable. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And what does Pilate say. <laughs> oh boy, Pilate. He says, ah, what is the truth? That's his response. He doesn't listen to Jesus. He just throws up this question, wow, what is truth? And that's the question. What is truth? Real truth. What is real? Well, let's go to John chapter 14, starting in verse 1. Very familiar to everybody that's listening, I'm sure. Do not let your hearts be troubled. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Jesus is clearly referring to this place that's not on this earth, where he is going. It's his kingdom where he's ultimately going to set up a place for us. And remember, this world and everything in it ultimately is going to be destroyed, and the kingdom of God is going to come afresh with a new creation, new earth, new heavens. Amen. And Jesus is preparing that already. Verse 4, he says, You know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, what I think I might have said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus just said, you know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas very rightly, I think, says, well, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way. Now, this podcast is called Ask for the Ancient Paths. And I always encourage people to walk in the ways of God. And Jesus says, I am the way. And if you think of the ancient paths, what is the most ancient pathway of all? The Lord himself, Jesus, the creator of all that is. The one who pre-exists all of creation. That is an ancient pathway. Jesus says, I am the way. And he says, I am the truth. And I am the life. Wow. What a claim. What a claim. For this man sitting with his disciples, saying, I'm the way to this kingdom of God. I am the truth, and I am life. And Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father. And from now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Wow. That is an amazing claim. And is he right, or is he wrong? Is he lying or is he telling the truth? Well, I believe that everyone on the side of the truth listens to him. And I refuse to reply in the way that Pilate did by saying, well, what is truth? As if it's not knowable. It is knowable. As a matter of fact, it's so knowable that for those disciples in the upper room, the truth was sitting right there with them. That's how knowable the truth is. So let's return to John chapter 8 again. I'll repeat myself and then we'll go on down through these truth claims that Jesus makes to these Jews. And let's listen for how often fatherhood is related to truth, to knowing the truth. So again in John chapter 8 verse 31. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you really are my disciples. And then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Uh, I'll stop real quick. It's kind of interesting that these are Jews who had believed him. This is not people that were trying to push back or destroy him. They believed him. And then he says this, and then they start a little bit of an argument with him. And it turns out that they're not actually following him. So sure seems from the scriptures that it's possible to believe Jesus, but then to turn against him and stop following him. We have a lot of examples of that in the Bible. So he says, Then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And they answered him, Well, we're Abraham's descendants, and we've never been slaves of anyone. So how can you say that the truth will set us free? Well, they're thinking about earthly slavery. They're thinking about slavery of their bodies being in bondage. And they said, Well, we're Abraham's descendants, and we've never been slaves. So what are you talking about? And Jesus replies, verse 34, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, no slave has a permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know you're Abraham's descendants, yet you're ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you have heard from your father. Oh, boy. They said, we've never been physically enslaved. And Jesus says, well, I'm not talking about physical slavery. I'm talking about being a slave to sin. And if the son sets you free, then you're going to be free. But if you're a slave, you don't have a permanent place in a family. But that's what Jesus came to do. 
to set us free so that we could be sons, daughters of the Father. Well, Jesus said in verse 38, I'm telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you have heard from your father. When they said, well, Abraham is our father. So Jesus has said, I know that you're Abraham's descendants, that you're descended physically from him. But now Jesus is talking about being spiritual children of Abraham. They said, Abraham's our father. And he says, well, if you were Abraham's children, then you would do the things that Abraham did, right? Acts of obedience, a living faith. But Jesus says, as it is, you're determined to kill me. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham didn't do such things. You are doing the things that your father does. So here we see that there's a link between fatherhood and truth. And Jesus is going to talk about this a little bit more. Um, These Jews say, well, we're not illegitimate children. Well, let's stop for just a second there. Some people read that, and I think it probably is a, a pretty ugly insult to Jesus because there surely were rumors that Jesus uh, didn't know who his father was because Mary had gotten pregnant before she married Joseph. And they said, we're not illegitimate children. The only father we have is God himself. Well, that's quite a claim, isn't it? And in verse 42, Jesus says, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and now I'm here. I've not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you're unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. And when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I'm telling the truth, why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says, and the reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Boy, what a conversation. The Lord lays it out so clearly. God is my Father. I have come into this earth to bring truth, but you don't listen to me because your Father is the devil. And the devil has no truth in him. He lies. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. We need to remember that. You remember Jesus said, anyone on the side of truth listens to me. So this means anyone who does not listen to Jesus is actually listening to a liar. There are these two kingdoms, these two places of fatherly authority, if I may say that. One is the eternal God, Jehovah. And the other is the prince of this world, the devil. And you know, Jesus knows the devil, right? Very well. He knows Satan. And what does Jesus say about Satan? He was a murderer from the beginning. And he's not holding to the truth because there is no truth in him. When we're tempted by evil forces, even by our own sinful nature, there's no truth in it. There may be things that sound like truth, or may seem true. If we're in a counseling session, if we're talking to somebody across a cup of coffee in a cafe somewhere, and they say something that sounds truthful, sounds like the truth, but it's not coming from God the Father, it's not drawing us closer to Jesus, then we need to be very, very, very careful not to submit ourselves to those words. Anyone on the side of the truth listens to Jesus Why would I go to a spiritist or a medium or somebody who is reading tarot cards or a palm reader? They're not listening to Jesus. They're not seeking Jehovah. So don't listen to them, even though there may be things that sound truthful. There is no truth in it. Remember the devil, when he speaks, he lies. His native tongue is lying, and he is actually the father of lies. God the Father is the father of the truth, and the devil is the father of lies. So we come to this question. It's the question that Pilate asked, but I don't think he really wanted to know the answer. What is truth? And scripturally, what is the answer to that question? What is truth? Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah. Better to say who is truth. Well, if we say that Jesus is truth... 
He is the way, the truth, the life. There's a difference between knowing about Jesus and actually knowing Jesus. As a matter of fact, some people listening don't know me. You may know about me. You could get on the internet and find some information about me, but you don't know me. And Jesus is saying, it's not enough just to know about me. You need to know me because demons know about Jesus. So how do we know about Jesus? Well, we can read the Bible and we'll know about Jesus. We can listen to podcasts that quote the scriptures and then we'll know about him. But how do we know him? How do we actually know Jesus? And he says, If you hold to my teachings, then you are really my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and then the truth will set you free. That's how we know Jesus, by keeping his commandments, by loving him and obeying him. And as we walk with him, then we don't only know about him, we actually know him will know the truth as we walk with him. This is why I think listening to that podcast yesterday kind of upset me a little bit. Because here is a Christian counselor who is talking about the truth, but he's not actually talking about knowing Jesus, or how can I say, the pathway to really getting to the truth and the way to really, truly being set free from the bondage of sin is to be a disciple of Jesus. And it strikes me that right now, in Western culture, perhaps in American culture mostly, there seems to be the idea that if we can improve ourselves, then we'll be able to be disciples of Jesus. And we have to improve ourselves before we become good disciples of Jesus. And that is the wrong way to think about it. That is, that's the wrong path. The way to address all of the hardships and the sins and the traumas and all of the difficulties that we face is to surrender ourselves to the Lord and walk with him and live in his ways. And then we're going to be set free. It's going to happen as we know him. We don't have to be better so that we can be ready to walk with him. We have to walk with him so that he will set us free and we'll become more like him, more righteous, more loving. His life will flow through us. And I think that's part of the danger of misapplying the scripture. To just flatly say the truth will set you free. Well, yeah, that is true. But how do you know the truth? How do you actually abide in the truth? Pilate said, what's truth? And the reply is, truth is standing right next to you. Truth is Jesus. Well, I wrote down just a couple of sentences here, and I'll close with these. The walk of a Christian is a living relationship. It's not a dead academic exercise. The walk of a disciple of Jesus is not the kind of faith that demons have. They believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and they tremble. So, my friends, let's be humble. It's always good to be humbled, and let's walk in obedience Let's run to Jesus. As we draw near to him, he draws near to us. Let's put our faith in him, but let's have that faith of Abraham, that living faith that expresses itself in obedience and love and good works. Let's be humble enough to allow ourselves to be grafted into that vine so that we as branches will bear eternal fruit. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Thank you for listening, and God bless you all.